Hello, and welcome to Beyond the Classroom. I'm Kendra, and today we're going to talk about plate tectonics. We're going to be using some Play-Doh, paper blocks, and our own pieces of the Earth's crust to illustrate how plate movement forms mountains, magma, and continually shapes our environment. First things first, what do I mean by plate tectonics? Plate tectonics is the scientific theory that explains how the Earth's crust moves. It was first proposed by Alfred Wegener in the early 1900s. He came up with this theory after comparing different types of fossils on different continents and found that the same fossils is existed along the coastlines of continents that were oceans apart. So you may notice on a map that South America looks like it would fit really, really snugly along the coast of Africa. And you would be correct. Hundreds of millions of years ago, all of the continents were formed together in a supercontinent called Pangaea. Over time, the continents began to split and move apart into their current positions in a process that Wegener called continental drift. The continents are still moving and constantly shaping the planet. It's these movements that we're going to talk about today. So, how does the Earth's crust move? To understand that, we have to talk a little bit about how the Earth is actually made. Now when I say Earth, I mean the planet as a whole, not just the dirt under your feet. So the Earth has different layers. There is the inner core, which is a solid ball of hot metal. It's made of iron and nickel, and temperatures at the inner core can reach 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. After the inner core comes the outer core, which is also made up of iron and nickel, but it's in a molten form. As the Earth rotates, the outer core spins along with the Earth's rotation, so it's constantly moving and churning. After the outer core comes the mantle, which is the thickest layer. It still moves like the outer core, but much more slowly and is mostly solid. On top of the mantle is a very, very thin layer of molten rock called the asthenosphere. Geologists believe it's this layer of molten rock that allows the final layer of the Earth the crust to be able to move. The crust is the outermost layer and it is also the thinnest. It makes up all of the land that we see and inhabit and it makes up all of the ocean floor. The crust is not one solid piece. It's made up of plates. And you can think of the plates as like pieces of a puzzle. Let's look at the pieces of plate that you have in your kits. If you don't have them in your kits, don't worry. It's really easy to find these things online and just print them off. And let's see if we can fit them together. Let's look at our plate pieces and see if we can fit them together. These plates move constantly, but very slowly, at around one to two inches a year. Because the plates are constantly moving, they often run into each other, rub against each other, slip under each other, and pull away from each other. These points of movements, called boundaries, are what shape our environment. Let's start by looking at what happens when two plates crash into each other. When two plates collide, one will always start to slide underneath the other in a process called subduction. The layers of dirt and rock that are on top of the two plates will start to get pressed and folded together and form mountains. Let's illustrate this with our Play-Doh and our plate pieces. Take your Play-Doh and let's grab our Eurasian plates and our Indian plates. So go ahead and move everything else out of the way. Now, take some of your Play-Doh and stick a little bit on the Indian subcontinent and a little bit on the Eurasian plate. Now, millions and millions of years ago, the Indian subcontinent was much farther south. Over time, it drifted and slammed into the Eurasian plate. Now, on your own plate pieces, you'll see that one plate naturally wants to slide underneath the other, and the masses of Play-Doh on top begin to fold over each other and form peaks. This is the same process that formed the Himalayan mountains when the Indian subcontinent slammed into the Eurasian plate. The plates are still moving together today, so the Himalayas are still growing. When two plates come together like this, it's called a convergent boundary. They're coming together, they are converging. One plate, as I said before, will always slide underneath the other. 
as the bottom plate goes lower and lower into the earth, the layers of rock that are part of that plate will begin to melt from friction and from heat. This melting is one of the ways that magma is formed. Because plates are constantly crashing into each other, subducting plates are always turning into magma, which basically means they're being destroyed. However, just as plates are constantly being destroyed, new pieces of the crust are constantly being formed at divergent boundaries, which divergent boundaries are where two plates move away from each other. So let's go ahead and take a look at our South American and African plates. Go ahead and move everything else. As I said earlier, millions of years ago, these two plates began to separate from each other. Now, as the plates began to move away and split apart, magma from the Earth's outer core began to fill in the gaps that were left in these pieces. So, every year, as plates moved farther and farther away, more magma came up to the surface to fill these cracks, essentially creating brand new land at the bottom of the ocean. Now this is still happening today in the Atlantic Ocean at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, an underwater mountain range that spans the entire Atlantic Ocean north to south. So let's switch plates and grab our North American and Eurasian plates. This little speck of green right here is Iceland. And Iceland sits along that Atlantic Ridge. Because the ridge is constantly being torn apart, Iceland itself is starting to split. And you can actually see this in Iceland in the form of large cracks. Because Iceland sits on top of this large divergent boundary, it has a lot of volcanic activity. Now, let's talk about volcanoes. Volcanoes, hot springs, geysers, and hot spots are all the result of boundaries, convergent and divergent boundaries that we just talked about. Now, we've talked a little bit about how magma forms. Um, one of the ways it forms is the subduction of a plate, so all of that rock gets melted down. Magma is lighter and more buoyant than the rock surrounding it, so it will rise closer to the surface of the Earth and form in magma chambers underneath volcanoes and other weak spots in the crust, like along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that we just talked about. Now, pressure from the movement of the crust surrounding the magma chamber and from the gases that formed when the magma was created put a lot of pressure on it and cause it to erupt out of the top. Volcanoes are known for spewing lava and ash and rocks everywhere and just causing massive amounts of destruction. And of course, they can do that. But as scary as they are, they're also a really, really vital part of new crust formation. Finally, let's talk about earthquakes. They are scary and surprisingly common. Some studies show that over a million earthquakes happen every year, but we don't necessarily feel all of them. Earthquakes occur when two plates slide against each other. This can be lateral movement, side to side, or vertical movement up and down. These areas of movement are called transform fault boundaries, or just transform boundaries. As these two plates are sliding against each other, crust is neither created nor destroyed. Instead, these large movements create a lot of pressure and friction, and this pressure and friction causes weakening in the crust that we call faults. When we feel the movement of these crusts moving together, those really, really strong vibrations are felt as earthquakes. Let's take a look at our plates one more time. Take a look at your North American and Pacific plates again. The San Andreas Fault in California is one of the most famous fault lines in the world and is on the North American plate. It runs somewhere along here. Now, these plates, the North American and the Pacific plate, are already touching, so go ahead and put them together. If you want, you can grab something small. I have this eraser head and set it on one of the plates. Now, go ahead and push these two plates together. Push as hard as you can. Now. The reason we're pushing is because it builds up tension along our fault line. And the release of that tension is what we feel in the form of an earthquake. The San Andreas Fault is called a strike slip fault. There are several different kinds. Now, in your kit, you should have some pieces of construction paper with all of these lines. Go ahead and fold up these pieces of paper along the dotted line and 
tape them together. We're going to use these to illustrate what strike slip fault means. You can pause the video while you fold. Okay, so now that you have your pieces of paper folded, they should look like this. So we're going to go ahead and put them together. Now, a strike slip fault, like the San Andreas fault, means that two plates are moving laterally, side to side, against each other. This movement is not nice and smooth. It's really quick and violent. It's the release of tons and tons and tons and tons of pressure on two plates. Just because a lot of faults lie at boundary lines doesn't necessarily mean that they have to form there. Indiana is actually home to several fault lines and lies close to two different seismic zones, the New Madrid and the Wabash Valley seismic zones. These faults were formed from millions of years of pressure on the North American plate, causing a weakening in the crust. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope you learned something new and want to show others what you learned. If you're interested in finding out more about the topic of plate tectonics and geology, be sure to check out some of these items as well as the Indiana Geological and Water Survey website. I'll see you next time.